Good everyone. My name is Graphics. If you look at the right hand side of the screen, you see a figure there. And the figure is associated with different forces acting at the point. Right? One of the force is 8 kN acting horizontally, that is acting along x axis towards the right, is going outward. And another force F acting at an angle of 45 degree inward, right? As you can see from the diagram. So F is unknown. And another force here is the force 14 kN acting at an angle of 30 degree to the horizontal, right? And we are told to calculate for the resultant force. Now, the first thing you should do when you come across questions like this is for you to draw out your free body diagram, right? So I will use these red lines to represent my vertical and horizontal line, right? And this is the center point. Let me call it that my center point A. So the same as this point here, A. So I'm calling that point point A. Now the 8 kN is acting horizontally. I'll place it there from point A outward. And the force F acting inward at an angle of 30, 45 degree, right, as you can see. And the 40 kN acting at an angle of 14 kN, 40 kN at an angle of what? 30 degree to the horizontal, as you can see here. So take here now. So I'm going to call that my the red lines, vertical, my y and x axis, I'll call it the north, south, east, and what and west. So we should pay attention to that. Now, one thing you need to understand here, this is a free body diagram, is that for we to be able to calculate for resultant force, we need to resolve any inclined force that is seen in the question, right? Now, if you look closely, the two inclined force that we have in this figure here is the force F and the 14 kN, right? So we have to what? Resolve it. Now, what do you notice? The force F is acting between the north and what? And the east, as you can see. So I'm going to bring out the north and the east out, right? Now, what do you notice? The force is acting inward. The arrow is going inward. So I'll put my arrow at these two end of what? Of the north and what? And east. Now, since the force is inclined at an angle of 45 degree, and since it's inclined to the horizontal, my north, which I'll call my y-axis, or what I call my vertical component, will be sine, while the horizontal component will be what? Cos, because it is inclined to the horizontal. That is why it's like that. Assuming it is inclined to the vertical, right? The vertical will be cos, horizontal will be what? Sine. So my vertical here now will now give me F, sine 45 and the result will give me what f cos 45 is that the key now that is for the inclined force f now we'll come for the inclined force 14 kN. the same thing is the 14 kN lies between the north and what and the west right so when i bring out the north and the west the arrow is going outward you can see the arrow of kN. so i'll put my arrow at these two end of the north and what and the west, or I call it my y and my x axis. Is that the key? So, similarly, it is inclined to the horizontal. So, my vertical component will be sine, horizontal component will be cos. So, we're having 14 sine 30 and what 14 cos 30. So, I will not touch the 8 kN because it is already horizontal component. Similarly, if I have y vertical component, I will not touch it. I only focus on inclined force. So what I just did here, we we'll call it resolution of forces. So when you see inclined force, you have to what? Resolve it, right? You have to resolute it. Is that taken up? So we've successfully done that. And once you've resolved the forces, you don't have business with inclined forces anymore. You focus on the forces that you have resolved. So I don't have business with F anymore. 
incline at 45 degree and I don't have business with 40 kN incline at 30 degree. I'll focus on the resolve part of it. He said, take it now. Now recall, now recall my resultant force arrow, right, is giving us the square root of summation of f of x square plus summation of what? f of y square. Now, we need to get the summation of f of x and also the summation of what f of y. What does it really mean? Summation of f of x means addition of all the forces acting along x axis or addition of all the horizontal components. Is that the case now? So from this case here now, and for my f of y means addition of all the vertical components or addition of all the forces acting along y axis. Is that the case now? So let's start with summation of f of x. Remember this particular equation here, I'll call it to be equation 1. So my summation of f of x now will now be giving me, now focus on only forces acting horizontally. I have 8 kN, it's acting horizontally and it's going towards the right, so it is positive. Right? I have f cos 45, it's acting towards the left, so it will be minus f cos 45. I have 14 cos 30, it's also acting towards the left, I'm having what? Minus 14 cos 30. This is what I have here. Now, from what we have here now, if you press on your calculator, 14 cos 30, it will give us 12.124. So we have minus 14 cos 30, the equivalent to what? Minus 12.124. If I now add it to the 8, it will give us minus 4.124. Right? Minus... Cos 45 is 0 0.7071 and there's a force F there. I'll put the F close to it. I'll tag that my equation 2. Is that taken? Now, I'll come again. I'll do for that of what? Summation of what? F of Y. So, for F of Y means I'm focusing only on the Y component. Forces acting along the Y axis, right? Vertical component. So, this will give me, I have the F sine 45. Since it's acting downward, look at the arrow. It will be negative, so minus f sine 45. Plus, I have 14 sine 30 is acting upward, right? So it will be positive. Any force acting upward is what? Positive. Why the force acting downward is what? Negative. So I'm having plus 14 sine 30. Now we know sine 45 is also equivalent to what? 0 0.7071. So I'll write it minus 0 0.7071, and there's an f there, so I'll put the f there. Plus, 14 sine 30 will give us 7, so plus 7. I'll call it equation 1, equation 2. Is that okay now? So we've gotten summation of f of x. I've gotten summation of f of y. So I'm going to input equation 2 and 3 into equation 1. So which will now give me the resultant first arrow will now be equal to the square root of summation of f of x is given as what? Minus 4.124 minus 0.7071 f all square plus summation of f of y is given as what minus 0.7071 right f plus 7 all square this is what we have here i've put my f of x and f of y into equation what equation one now our ruler will now be equals to if you expand minus 4.124 minus 0.7071f you are going to be having 17.007 plus 0.4999f square plus 5.832f how did i get this good the easiest and efficient way to expand this kind of question is you square the first one which is minus 4.124 you are going to have 17.007 plus you square the second one minus 0.7071f you are going to be having plus, uh, plus 0.4999f square right because minus times minus is plus now you will now multiply the power which is 2 times everything in the brackets so we have 2 times minus 4.124 times minus 0.7071f we're going to be having 5.832f is that the case now because the minus times minus 
here will give you what plus now plus in the other bracket you're going to do the same thing squaring the first one you can try that for yourself squaring the first one which is 0 0.0 minus 0 0.7071 f you're going to be having 0 0.4999 f square plus square the second one which is 7 square we are going to have 49 right then you multiply it the power with everything in the bracket so it will be 2 times minus 0 0.7071 f multiplied by 7 will give us 9.8994 f is that the key now so these are the expansion so the next thing you are going to do is to color like terms so we we'll start with the degree of 2 that is with the one that has f square so we'll see my arrow will now give me the square root of 0 0.4999 f square plus 0 0.4999 f square give us 0 0.9998 f square right go for the one that has f now 5.832 f minus 9.899 f that will give us minus 4.067 for f plus the constant now 17.007 right plus 49 and i'll give us 66.007 is that the key now i can term this my equation 4 is that the key now we'll go further now if i do this the needful another way of writing square root again i can write it as saying arrow is equals to 0. Point, open bracket 0. 0.9998 f square minus 4.0674 f plus 66.007 close bracket every three is power what 1 over 2 that one where 2 is representing the word the square root sign there is that the key now now in solving this kind of equation here it is technical so we need to look for the derivative first right we have to differentiate so that we are going to reduce the equation. Is that the key now? Now, if you remember your calculus very well, this is in form of what? This is used. The principle you can use here, you can use chain rule here. I will say function of function. So, how are you going to do that? We'll be differentiating the resultant force arrow. We'll trace it to what? The force F, right? So, we'll be having the arrow over the F. So, whenever in front of the arrow, what is close to arrow is 1. Whenever I differentiate a constant, you have zero. So the arrow over the f will give us what? Zero equals to now in chain rule, the short way of differentiating is that write back your equation, which is 0 0.9998 f square minus 4.0674f plus 66.007. Right? You close the bracket, then you bring the power one over two down. To multiply everything so i write my power here one over two since i brought the power down i'll subtract one from the power so it will be one over two minus one that will give us minus one over two right that's what we have there now i will not differentiate what i have inside so in differentiating this means that if you want to differentiate if i have 0 0.9998 f square differentiating means the two will come down to multiply everything and that will give us 1.9996 right then since the 2 has come down we subtract 1 from the 2 and that will just give us 1 so we have every power 1 which is saying f minus if i differentiate 4.0674 f now no one thing that the f has the power of 1 so the 1 will come down to multiply everything you have in front so we'll still be having 1 times 4.0674 f will give us 4.0674 now the f there since the one has come down from the f you subtract one one minus one will be zero and f is power zero will be what one that is why we just have only 4.0674 is that the key now so i'll close the bracket here now um if you are finding this helpful Please don't forget to click on the like button and also click on the subscribe button. Is that the key now? 
and if you want to understand the concept of uh, differentiation using chain rule you can click on this link at the top right corner of the screen here Is that again so we'll proceed now we will now have zero Is that again now to remove that negative sign from the uh, power here which is minus one over two means that i'm going to be having the minus one over two is only for the one in the bracket it's not affecting the two so i'm going to be having um one over two open bracket we have 0 0.9998 f square minus 4.0674 f plus 66.007 everything one all over two right multiply by 1.9996 f minus 4.0674 right this is what we have here now if i multiply both of them start again i will um cross multiply take what's under here right because two times this is one over two so two times everything here will still give us everything here is that the case now so if i cross multiply taking everything at the denominator here to the other side of the equation so zero times everything there will give us zero so we left with zero is equals to 1.9996 f minus 4.0674 right so if i take minus 4.0674 to the other side of the equation i'm going to be having 4.0674 equals to 1.9996 f right so if i divide both sides by 1.9996 f i'll be having 4.0674 divided by 1.9996 right is equals to what is equals to 1.9996 nine 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 six f all over one point nine 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 six that okay now so this we quit this we will now be left with f is equals to what four point zero six seven four divided by one point nine 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 six will give us two point zero three four that is the force that okay now so from here we've gotten our force so you can easily put this force into equation four here right Whenever you see f, you place that value of f, which is 2.034 kN. So when I place it there, in that um, aspect, I'm going to be having... Um, so let's put the value of f equals to 2.034. So r will now be equals to the square root of 0 0.9998. So I'm writing f square, I'm writing just put the value of f 2.034 all square minus 4.067 f. So I'm writing f, I'll put 2.034 there plus 66.007. Now my arrow will now give me the square root of 2.034 square multiplied by 0 0.9998 will give us 4.1363, right? Minus 4.067 multiplied by 2.034 will give us 8.394 plus 66.007. So the arrow here will now give us the square root of 61.749. So my arrow will now be equals to 7.8580 kilonewton, approximately 7.86 kilonewton. So that is the resultant force that we just calculated for. So this is what we have here. So if you have found this video helpful, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also share to those in need. Thanks for watching.